Jared Poland, fro knows photo dot com back here with super secret project that's right i'm on my home base sofa again for this week's super secret project i'm trying something very new today it's pretty much a portfolio it's not a portfolio review it's it's a photo shoot review of a reader's photos and my input that will help everybody out there uh, Ryan McNamara is a reader of the site and I guess he's a pretty young man still in either high school or junior high school and called because he had questions about shooting in a very dark area, a gymnasium, trying to capture basketball images with a Rebel T1i and a 5014 or a 18. I have to go back and listen to the audio. So I recorded the Skype call which you are going to, going to hear right after this and then followed by that you're going to see a screen flow review of the photos that he took. I'm going to point out what he did right. I'm going to point out what, they, what he can do to take it to the next level because surprisingly enough for only having a camera for two weeks he did an incredible job with basically following the steps that I've said in the past on the website what to do when you get started. Um, so we're going to take a look at that. We're going to review his photos. I'm going to show you some photos that I took at a basketball game, which would be similar to what he was taking. Um, of course, I used the D3S, and that's a little bit of cheating when you're shooting at 5,000 ISO, but that's beside the point. I'll bring it back to a D3 thousand soon enough to show you exactly how to do it there. But I just I was doing that for a test reason, which you'll see why in another video. Uh, but we had a good conversation, and the, basically what it come down to, came down to is why don't you send me some of the images that you took, and I will be more than happy to review, critique, and give you the feedback in the form of a video. So I think that's a great way to help everybody learn out there, and it's going to be a really cool video. So listen to a Skype call coming up right after this, followed by the actual critique of his work and full-on tips. So... 80s nostalgia. Well, I have the Smurf. This is my little Smurf that I had from when I was a kid wearing his Eagles jersey. I guess this is a Jaworski jersey if it's a number seven. Didn't Jaws wear? I don't know. I have to ask my dad what Jaws wore. Anyway, also this. This is a Betamax beta movie from Sony. Autofocus. This is one of the very first personal camcorders that you could purchase. Uh, it used beta tapes, which obviously failed when Sony um, didn't allow the porn industry to use their media. Instead, they used the cheaper VHS, which they found, well, and we know the rest is history with VHS versus beta. So my mom used to carry this around everywhere we went, Disney, uh, Hershey Park, any vacation. And it actually still powers up. I do have an AC, da uh, AC power adapter at home. At home. I am at home. And that's about it. I'm sure this was about $1,000 back then. Uh, and there's actually still a tape in it, but I really don't know what's on there. So there you go. Stay tuned for the Skype call followed by the critique of Mr. McNamara's work. Jared Poland. Fro knows photo.com. See ya. Fro knows. Hey, um, so I shoot a lot of sports photography in a very dark and dim old gym, and I, it's I've only been, I've only been in digital. SLR photography for about two weeks and got my 51.4 a week ago and I'm new to it and what, what I, camera? Uh, it's a Canon Rebel T1i okay and it uh, I started shooting at uh, at f1.4 um, but what, I also found that I was getting basketball yep basketball and I found that the that it was a lot harder to get the focusing points at 1.4. So I tried going up to 2.8, but then I found that I had to boost up my ISO, and I was getting a lot of grain in my pictures. Were you getting grain in the computer, or were you looking at it on the screen and seeing grain? I was looking at it on the screen and seeing a lot of grain. Right. 
I mean, yeah. a lot of time, are you shooting raw or JPEG? Raw. All right. So you can bring a lot of that back later. Yeah, I think I think my main problem is I don't think I was editing it correctly. All right. And All right. it was just bringing out the grain. It didn't seem to bring out the subject. Right. Um, well, let, let's. what were your settings when you were shooting in the gym? My settings were 1 one-hundredth of a second at f1.4 ISO 400. Right. All right. And I think the 400 ISO is probably part of the problem. You have to bu- you have to bump it up, and you can't be afraid to go higher. Uh, yeah. But a lot of it in what what mode were you in? Manual aperture priority. Aperture priority. So you're in aperture priority, which in a gym you probably don't have to be because the lights aren't changing. I think the one of the only reasons why I did it is because the lights will would dim and then get brighter, dim then get brighter because the building is so old. And the fluorescent bulbs up at the top of the ceiling, which are probably like ten feet up, kept going on and off and on and off the whole night. So right, there's I think not that's much not-, not much you can do about that. But but for okay. a basic starting point, I would at least for sports want to get it to at least two fiftieth of a second, if not three twentieth. And to do that, you're going to have to take your ISO and probably go to about a thousand, if it lets you, <laughs> or sixteen hundred. I think that camera should be able to handle it. Yeah. And what you're going to do is you'll shoot it at at least 2.8. Do you have the camera with you right now? Yeah, I have it right here. Hold All on, right, let me so, right, it. So, dial it up to 1600 ISO. And how's the lighting conditions where you're at now? Is it similar to what the gym would be like? Uh, it's actually a lot brighter in here. Okay. All right, hold on. All right, I'm at 1600. All right. And go to manual. Yep. Go to 2.8. Okay. All right. And put your shot. You say it's brighter than the gym. Yeah, a lot brighter. How bright? Well, are we talking daylight or are we talking uh, light bulbs? Light bulbs. All right. So why don't you make it 3 20th of a second? Uh, make it 2 50th of a second and shoot something and tell me how that looks. Ah, uh, the sound of a cannon shutter. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm still getting a lot of the 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 dark grain pickle like pixels. Yeah, don't worry about it. I mean, honestly, I wouldn't worry about that. That's probably just the way it's being processed on the camera. But if okay. if, if it's a matter, of, well, is the shot right on? Is the exposure right? Yeah, the exposure's right. It just I'm just getting. How about a lot them that? apples? I get the exposure right now. Where are you in the world? In, uh, yeah, I'm in Connecticut. He's in Connecticut, and I don't even know the lighting situation, and we guessed his light situation from here. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, so what you're going to do is you start shooting in there. If you can get to 3 20th of a second at 2.8 or 2.5, and you don't have to make too many corrections, or you, you really don't want to be changing. You don't have to change as much because the lighting isn't going to change. I know if the light goes on and off, that's one thing, so you don't want to shoot when the light goes off, but... You know, get a get a basic setting set, then work with the raw fire file later. You should probably send me a raw file and I'll edit it. All right, that sounds good. All right, so um, if you have something that is a good shot from the game, even at one point four, just send it over and uh, and I'll make a video with it and we'll put it up with the Skype call and let other people see what's going on. Yeah, that sounds good. All right. All right, thanks. All right, just drop it in the uh, drop it in this box. All right. And then uh, we'll do a file transfer. Cool? All right. Sounds cool. All right. Have a good one. All right. You too. Later. Later. And we are back. Ryan, thank you for your call. I hope you guys liked that call. And now what we are doing new, uh, I am going to critique and edit the photos that he sent over from, I guess, the first two weeks of shooting. And you can see that it's shot with the Rebel T1i, this first shot is shot at 1 100th of a second, f1.4, 50 millimeter lens, 400 ISO. Um, Now, we know that shooting at 1.4 is difficult, right? Because of the shallow depth of field. What happens is, uh, you you know this, or you should know this, or if you don't, you may now know it. The smaller the number, the smaller the focus area is going to be. It's going to be shallower. And as you go up in numbers to, say, F16, the deeper, the more depth 
you are going to have, the more in focus area you are going to have. But as you do that, the, the aperture shrinks. The higher the number, the less light you're letting in, which means the shutter speed has to stay open longer. The, lo the, the smaller the number, the larger the aperture is going to be. It's going to let a lot of light in quick, but the exposure is going to be much faster because if the shutter stays open too long, your photo is going to be overexposed, and you don't want it to be over to overexposed. So it's always a trade-off. Um, my first suggestion here would be definitely to bump the ISO up higher. I don't recommend shooting sports or very many things at 1.4 because when they move, you're going to miss that focus. It's just it's just such a small line of focus that you sometimes miss it way too easy. So in this case, I would probably push the T1i to about 1600. So we'd go from 800 to 1600, and if we stuck at stayed at 1.4, we would change the shutter speed, we'll say from 100 to 200 and then 200 to 400. It would be 400th of a second at 1.4. But 1.4 is tough to shoot at. I would say shoot at, you know, f2, 2.5, maybe even 2.8. So 1.4 to what? 1.8 is a stop, and then 2. There's so many stops in there. Um, so let's see. I would go to f2.8, and I'd say shutter speed about 250th of a second if not 320th, to try and cheat the system to get a little bit more of uh, a chance of freezing the action. But here, two fi let's get 250th of a second at 2.8 at, at 1600 ISO should be a, not a problem. So what you're looking at in this photo, I was pretty surprised that when you zoom in, you can see that it's pretty sharp because she isn't really moving. She is not going forward. She's not going backwards. She is not running down the court. She is static. But you can see that there's some movement in the ball as she starts to bounce the ball. That's the 100th of a second where it's starting mm. to blur because of movement. You can see that the background is nice and isolate, uh, nice and blown out, which is isolating your subject. So this is not a bad photo. It's just there's not much going on there, but it's a good start. It's good composition, good framing to go vertical, and none of these are cropped. These are as they are. So as you can see, this is how that shot. So now we're moving into action. What I like about this shot is that Ryan got down on a lower angle. It's very important to get down on a low angle because that just makes your subjects look better. They look larger. They look, you know, it's just a better look that you're going for when you go down on a lower angle to shoot images. So we'll just make a quick correction here. Bumping my exposure about a stop. Some contrast for some boomification. Take out some yellow. You know I'm not a big Phil Light fan, but we'll just throw some in there for now with a little bit more contrast. And there we go. We went from that to that. And that's a very good image. It's still a little green slash yellow, but that's because of those lights. And we'll add a little bit of magenta. And there we go. We have a cool photo. So moving on to this, we can see at 1 one twenty-fifth of a second... It's going the wrong way. So if he's an aperture priority, you, know, you would want to be in manual to control this. When subjects are standing still, you want to go the other way with your shutter speed. You don't need to freeze the action now. You can move your shutter speed up higher, which means, sorry, you can move it lower, slower, which is going to compensate for her being in the shadow area because you need to let the shutter stay open a little longer to add more of an exposure. So there we go. This is going to be a black and white, and we can save it and make it work. Even being that far off, the joys of the RAW files. The joy of a RAW file. We saved it, even though it's 400 ISO, and we were off by three stops, which is, which is really extreme. This is now a usable image, and that's where it started. Brought it right back. Uh, shooting the backs of people try to anticipate when they're going to turn and get the action coming towards you uh, some coaching not a bad thing I just don't think it's in focus uh, that's what happens at 1.4 it's gonna be more difficult to focus plus it's not much action it's a little far away you want to try to focus on a little closer same here I would have focused in on the coach 
in this case, or if the person right here in the foreground was turned the other way, then you could do it. But it's nice composition anyway if the person was turned the other way because this would be a nice image. Just when you shoot people's backs, it's not as interesting in this case. So up top, mm -hmm. trying to shoot action, it's good. But again, at 1.4, if the focus is here, everybody else is going to be out of focus and it's not going to look as good but it's a nice angle to try things at so you know, I see that you changed your ISO he changed his ISO to 800 here um, and doubled to 200th of a second so there you can see how down below when he was at 400 ISO it was only 100th of a second so that one stop change took place there in that aperture priority mode alright let's see focus issue because of movement same thing, I see that you went to 200th of a second to try to freeze it, but just miss focus here. On something like this, I would try to go vertical um, and fill the frame as much as possible. Same thing here. You don't want to go chopping off the knees as they're running because it's just not as interesting. But it's very close, Ryan. You are very close to, to getting what you need. It's just a matter of getting that composition and getting those settings down. And so far, the composition has been pretty darn good for only shooting for two weeks. Um, it looks like you're standing in this picture, so I would say get down at the lower angle, try to, you know, find some interest in the photos, and, and just, you know, it's a little teetering on sharp, but, you know, for just playing around right now, this is good. I like this better. You're at center court, uh, hopefully sitting down, get those low angles, and wait, anticipate that action coming towards you, because when you have just a 50 millimeter lens, you've got to anticipate when they're going to come towards you. Because that's the most important. That's going to be the most interesting photos. Uh, same thing here. I would stay away from shooting these under the basket shots unless everybody was coming up the court and then you're getting action coming up the court. So really, it's just a few minor tweaks, Ryan, and you are right there. So I love to see that. After only two weeks of shooting, you're very close and, and you've taken a lot of the tips that I've given on the website and really put them into use here. So... The recommendations are go to a little higher f-stop, probably around 2.8, probably go to ISO 1600, you know, we'll deal with the grain, but when you're first starting out, it's very important to get your, to, to be able to capture the image first. Uh, the settings will come later, and I'm going to talk about this in one of the books in the five-year plan also, that get your image, get, get the composition right, get the framing right, get the image you know, as right as possible in the camera, and the settings are going to follow later. So let me quickly show you some examples of me shooting some basketball the other day, which are right here. Here we go. And I'll just go through this pretty quick. Uh, you see that I'm filling the frame. I'm at a low angle going from there. I don't, it's not the greatest shot because she's looking the other way. It's better if she was looking towards me, so I'm critiquing my own stuff here. Uh, same thing, this is a teetering on an okay shot. She's going to transition the ball up the court, but you can see that everything's nice and sharp. So I'm sitting by the baseline in the corner, and the action is going to come towards me. And when the action come toward, comes towards me, that's the best time to get these action shots. Filled the frame, it's not cropped, and there you go. Here is a shot that you would be able to get with your 50 millimeter lens. This is basically the same thing. This was a 70 millimeter on the full frame, which means that this is almost the equivalent of what the 50 would be on a DX or APS-C on the Canon. You can see the action going on under the basket. This is a nice shot under the basket showing what is going on. Obviously, I would not like, you know, would like to have her face shown in this and probably with the ball but to see these people I'm pointing at the screen let me use the mouse these people over here you see this action everybody's looking it's the lines are running up that is really cool that's a good thing to look at coming towards the basket is another good thing to look at don't forget there's action there's things going on away from the court during timeouts get these nice shots of people on the bench action coming up the floor it's just all about anticipating. This is a great angle. Of course, I'm shooting with a 200 millimeter here, so it's a little more difficult with a 50, but she's giving you a feel of what the good composition here is looking like. Action with multiple people in the frame coming up the court. This is all right. Nothing majorly good about that. Just people on the bench. People on the bench. People on the bench. Action shot going up the court. Referee just testing out at 200. So you see how I'm filling the frame? 
looking for the action. Same thing here, more action, more bench stuff, and then again coming up the floor. Shooting through people, using them to draw you in. So I'm going to leave it at that. There's some good action here. The good places to sit when you're shooting basketball, baseline in the corner, right around this area is a good place because there's a lot of action going to go on underneath the basket and coming towards you. Uh, where the scorer's table is, is another good place for when they're bringing the ball up the court or possibly right under the basket. Do not be afraid to go sit there. You're shooting pictures, just tell them, hey, I'm shooting for the school. They have a problem, whatever, they'll kick you out. Remember, it's better to ask for forgiveness than permission. Remember that. So, Ryan, I hope you learned something. Hope everybody else got something out of this. And if you're interested in having me critique your work, definitely shoot me an email. Don't send me the files. Just, you know, maybe send me a link on Flickr to a bunch of photos, and, and maybe we will make this an ongoing thing. So, that's all I've got today. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya.